Good morning. Good morning. It's morning time. Hello? There's a crow right us. I'm trying to film a video. Oh my god, it's looking me right in the eyes. Just being- Can you stop? Stop! I don't know what to do about this. Hello there, friendly neighbors, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Elara is here with me today. She did just wake up from her nap, and it's definitely because I woke her up because I needed attention. Yes, I needed some attention from you. I miss you. You sleep all day and I'm at work. And then I come home and you're sleeping. Today I wanted to go a little bit back to the basics with ferret care because this is actually a video that's been requested for me to do a couple times now and I uh, I had to clean my ferret cage anyway so you know that's how I feel too. Today we're just going to be talking a little bit about how to set up a ferret cage as well as a little bit of information on ferret cage safety and what kind of cages you should be buying for your little fuzzy friends here. I don't really have anything else to say besides that, so I guess we can just hop right to it. Thank you for that kiss. I do love you. I love you too. I love you so much. So let's just get right to it, guys. Let's talk about ferret cages. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to ferret cages are the different types of ferret cages that you can get. There are quite a few different cages out there for purchase, depending on where you live. As a general rule, I like to really just only promote the double ferret nation cage by Midwest. You can also get a double critter nation cage. They just have a little smaller bar spacing, but they're still going to be safe for ferrets. The double ferret nation cage is really great. It's a very good size to fit in everything that you need to. It also gives your ferrets a lot of space. It is very convenient to clean because the entire thing opens up. All in all, A plus cage, I really recommend going with it. Of course, where there is a wonderful ferret cage that I strongly recommend, there are many terrible ferret cages that you really should not own for your ferrets. I'm gonna put it out there, any ferret cage made by Katie is not good. Do not buy any of those cages. Any cage that has a wavy uh, ramps. I don't know why they all have wavy ramps. All of those cages are garbage. They're bad for a couple different reasons. First off, they're never big enough. They are all way too small for your ferrets. Second reason being they have a very terrible use of space. Like this cage that I found when I just Googled ferret cage, it's terrible. What is your ferret supposed to do in all that negative space? Does it fly? I really don't know. My ferrets don't fly. Maybe they fly in other places, but this cage is such a waste of money. Do not buy it. When you're looking for a good cage for your ferrets, you want something that is multi-level, has a lot of platforms, preferably something that doesn't have a wire bottom, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later, and something that has enough space for litter box, food dish, and a bunch of different places for them to hide in. One style of cage that I actually think really works very well for ferrets is a hutch style cage. There's a lot of rabbit hutches that you can get out there that make really good cages for ferrets and this is because like the double ferret nation they make a really good use of negative space so you have a lot of area for your ferret to walk around on which gives the cage a lot of floor space and they're just like pretty. I don't know hutch style cages to me I think they're very aesthetic and they look very nice in a home. Okay Alara I'm not a jungle gem. I'm not a jungle gem. I might look like one but I'm not. Ooh. Do yourself a favor, get a double ferret or a double critter nation cage because yes, they are a little expensive, but they are a good investment and your ferret is gonna be very happy living in one of those cages. Now, I'm going to be a bit of a hypocrite for a second here. Alara senses my hypocrisy and she says, I'm out of here, mom. Don't need none of that negative juju. I actually do not have a double ferret nation cage. Boo, you suck. Now, I will spare you the explanation for that. So the cage that I have for my ferrets is the... The cage that I have for my ferrets is an all living thing, multi-level ferret cage. I've honestly tried so many times to Google this cage and figure out more specifics on what the cage is, but I honestly think that they just don't sell it anymore or maybe I'm just not good at internet-ing, I don't know. So really that's all the details I can give you about it. Um, I'm showing you video of it right now, probably that's for editing Kenya to figure out if that looks good or not. Um, essentially, this cage is a multi-level ferret cage, so it's not terrible, but it obviously doesn't have the same size that a ferret nation cage would have. It's about the same size as a feisty ferret cage, and here is a picture comparing the feisty ferret to the double ferret nation. And as you can see, 
very big size difference. Now, having said that, I don't think that the All Living Things cage is a terrible cage that no one should ever get. I actually think that it makes a pretty decent cage for two ferrets, but if you get anything more than that, you really should be upgrading to a bigger cage. Thankfully, it is not the only cage that I have. I have four ferrets, two bonded pairs that are slowly sort of becoming friends, and right now they aren't living in the same cage. I have a feisty ferret and a... I forgot. What's the name of it again? I always forget. What is it? I have a feisty ferret and an all living things ferret cage. So my ferrets do get enough space in their cages because there's only two in each cage. But if you have more than two ferrets and you're thinking about getting either the feisty ferret or the all or the all living things ferret cage, I would reconsider get yourself a ferret nation. Like I have said, I'm going to stop being a broken record and repeating myself because I think it's time for us to move on. A big disclaimer that I wanna put on this video, and I really want everyone who watches this video to very much understand, ferrets are not caged animals. They should not be in their cage all day. Keeping your ferret in a cage all day is pretty similar to keeping your cat in a cage all day. That's weird. Why would you keep your cat in a cage? So please, please make sure that even if you're watching this video to set up a cage for your ferrets, that you are giving your ferrets a absolute minimum of six hours outside of their cage every single day. My ferrets get at least 12 hours of free roam every day when we are, aww, and Laura's sitting on Alex's gamer chair. I gotta take a picture. <gasps> Are you gaming, baby girl? Baby. Oh, yes. Oh, we're so jangled. Robin, oh, you're so cute. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> What were we talking about? My ferrets get at least 12 hours outside of their cage every single day, and that's just because when I wake up in the morning, I let them out of their cage. What are you doing to my daughter? She's, she's gaming. I got a really, can I show you the cute pictures right that I got? It's so freaking cute. She's a little gamer. She's so freaking cute. Let's go play some games. So we're gonna go have a land party. Local area duke work. We're gonna go game. Probably gonna go play some, some Call of Dookie. D-O-O-K. Yeah. What have I been trying to say? I've been trying to say it's totally fine to put your ferrets in their cage when you leave the house or when you're going to bed or something, that's completely acceptable, but you really don't need to keep your ferrets in their cage all day, is what I'm saying. Keeping your ferret in the cage for too long can lead to a bunch of problems. Cage raging is really the biggest one and cage raging will result in your ferret hurting their teeth, which can lead to a lot of money spent on dental work in the future. Also, it doesn't keep them enriched, so it makes them really, really bored, which means that they might start chewing things in their cage, which could result in a blockage. And them being bored is also just really bad for their brains. Imagine if you were locked in a box with nothing to do all day. Wow, would you ever just start spiraling and you would probably go crazy. So let's not let our ferrets go crazy. Let's let them outside of their cage. As someone on my Tumblr said, uh, let the noodles be silly. I think that that was a really beautiful sentiment and I carry that with me wherever I go. Moving on. The first thing we need to talk about when it comes to what to put in your ferret cage is what to not put in your ferret cage. There are a few things that you really just want to avoid putting in there and I will tell you about them right now and explain why you don't want to put them in your cage. The first thing that you do not want to put in your ferret cage is a water bottle. Water bottles are a big one that a lot of people do make the mistake of, self included. I used a water bottle for the first two years of owning Luna because I did not realize that they were bad. But actually water bottles are not good for ferrets. They are super bad first off for your ferrets teeth and again that could result in dental issues which will need surgery or some sort of medical procedure to take care of and that's money that you just don't want to spend. And secondly, water bottles actually don't give your ferrets enough water. A ferret will be licking at it and licking at it and licking at it, not getting enough in their system and eventually they'll just be tired of trying to get water and they'll just stop and this can lead to your ferret being dehydrated. Dehydration is a really, really dangerous thing for ferrets because they're such small animals. So please do not use a water bottle, instead use a water dish and again I will talk about that a little bit more when we're talking about what to put in our ferrets cages. The second thing that you don't want to put in your ferret cage, which once again people make a mistake of, self-included, is toys. The big problem with toys is that unsupervised playtime with toys can sometimes result in your ferrets chewing their toys, which can then lead to a blockage. Blockages are bad, we don't want blockages. This is the no blockage zone. So to avoid that potential risk, just don't put toys in your ferret cage. If you are giving your ferrets the proper amount of free roam, which you should be doing, please give them the proper amount of free roam time, then they aren't going to need toys in their cage anyway, because the only time they're going to be in their cage is when they are sleeping. I have 
captured in Andromeda. Now, the last thing that you want to avoid putting into your ferret cage is something that is specific to your individual ferret, so it really means just knowing your ferret, and that's anything that you know your ferret has a habit of chewing or swallowing. Andromeda here recently started a habit of chewing socks. I'm sort of applying this same logic to our entire house. I have blocked off the closet where she used to like to sleep in. I'm sorry, please forgive me. So really make sure that the second you see signs of your ferret chewing a particular type of fabric or type of thing that you remove that from their cage and don't give them access to it if you aren't around. So we have finally, we're finally ready to get to the point in the video where I actually talk about how to set up a ferret cage. I just really needed to tell you guys all of that stuff first. It's very important to me that you know it. Let's start this off already. Let's, let's, let's do it to him. So this list is in absolutely no particular order. It is just in the order at which I put things into my ferret cage. So you might do it a different way, but just, just so you know. So the very first thing that you're gonna wanna make sure is in your ferret cage is ramp liners for your ramps. I actually have this one here that I made. I think it was like my second YouTube video that I made a little DIY for it. So go check that out if you wanna know how to make ramp liners. In most ferret cages that I have seen or owned, the ramps on them just aren't very good. Maybe they're just like hard plastic and it just, the ferret's not gonna be able to climb up those. Or maybe they are wire. In that case, you really wanna make sure they're covered just because a wire ramp can lead to them getting their little feetsies stuck, which can make them uh, hurt their feetsies. We gotta protect the feetsies. On that same train of thought, as well as liners for the ramps, you're also gonna want some sort of cage liner. Now, cage liners are something that you can buy on certain Etsy stores that are specific to your ferret cage, and they will slip perfectly right onto the platforms, or you can do what I do and just use blankets. Cage liners are especially, especially, especially important if you have a cage that has a wire bottom. Now, I know that this is the case for feisty ferret cages, and I'm sure there are other commercial cages out there that have the same problem. Wire bottoms are really bad for ferret's teeth. for a few different reasons. The biggest one being that your ferret can very easily get their feet stuck inside of the wire bottom. And again, that can hurt them just in the same way that it would if it was a ramp. And the second reason that they're not great is that they put a lot of strain on your ferret's feet and it's just really uncomfortable to walk on. Imagine you were supposed to walk barefoot across a grate for half of the day. So if you have a ferret cage that has a wire bottom, you really need to make sure that you cover that. And that means more than putting just a fabric cover over it. You need to use something a little bit sturdier underneath your liner or your fabric. It can be a bunch of different things you could use. Honestly, you could even just use a piece of cardboard. That's like the cheapest and easiest one. You could get a sheet of plastic from the hardware store. I actually have a piece of pleather that I used in my feisty ferret cage that Andromeda and Alara live in. Um, and it's just cut to the size of the ferret cage and it just gives it a little bit of extra support. And then on top of that, I put their blankets. And that's again, just to make sure that they aren't stepping on any like weird bumps and grooves. The next thing that you can put in your ferret cage, which is something that's sort of optional and just something that I like to put into my ferret cage is tubing. Now, these tubes are actually something that I went and I bought at the hardware store. I don't know what they're actually for. Oh, they're for drainage. They're drainage tubes. But they work so wonderfully perfect in ferret cages. They're like a perfect size for a ferret to crawl through and they're really sturdy. So you can just zip tie it up to different parts of your cage and it gives them somewhere else to just explore and have fun in. They're also pretty cheap. This whole thing, which is 20 feet of tubing, only cost me $25, as opposed to the tubes that you can buy at pet stores that are actually for small pets, which are significantly more expensive and significantly shorter. So save yourself some money, buy one of these, cut it up. They work really, really well. They're sort of similar to um, dryer tubes. I talk about those in my top 10 ferret toys video. Dryer tubes are also really great, but they don't work as well for the cage because they are flimsy and loose, whereas these are sturdy. They're great. The next thing that you want to put in your ferret cage is a litter box. Wow, big shocker there. They need a litter box. Now, when it comes to litter boxes, there's a bunch of different types and different sizes that you can get. As a general rule of thumb, you want to make sure that your ferret can get their entire body into the litter box and they're not hanging out of it. Corner litter boxes are something that are a little controversial in the ferret owner community. Some people say that you absolutely shouldn't use them. In my opinion, they're okay so long as, once again, your ferret can fit their entire body into them. I have a corner litter box in Luna and Nova's cage and that's because Luna and Nova are both very small. They're little girls and they can fit into it perfectly fine. So just know your ferret. I talked about this one a little bit earlier, but now I'm just gonna go into more detail because the next thing you wanna put in your ferret cage is 
a water dish instead of a water bottle. So the best kind of dish that you can get for your ferret cage is a clip-on crock. The one that I have here, this part goes onto the cage and then you just put the water dish in and, one second, let me, and then you just put the water dish in and give it a little twist and then it stays still and your ferret isn't gonna be able to knock it over because ferrets really like to knock over water dishes. So clip-on crocs work super well for that. Personally, I do not put food in my ferret's cage and that's just because since my ferrets free roam 12 hours a day and they are raw fed, when they're in their cage at night, they, they don't eat. I only feed them during the day. So there's really no reason for me to put their food in their cage. Does that make sense? I think it does. You get what I'm trying to say. They don't eat at night and that's when they're in their cage. I could have said it that way, but I felt the need to complicate things. So now you're confused. Clip on croc. Andromeda. Okay. Let's go hang out with your dad. Yeah, you can take the tube with you, I'm done with it. Clip-on Crocs you can get at most pet stores and Amazon. This one is actually supposed to be for birds, so if you can't find them in the small animal section, go check the bird section because they will for sure be there. The next thing you need, of course, in your cage is some beds. I just get my beds at the dollar store. I don't know about you guys, because they're like, $3 and then when they get gross, I can just throw them away and I don't care. Um, I really like to make sure that I put a blanket on top of each little bed that I give them. And that's just because they like to, they like to cozy on up in the little blanket and I want to give them a little blanket to tuck themselves into. Doesn't that just look nice and cozy? Kind of just looks like a pile of fabric, but it'll look better in their cage. I promise. The next thing you want to put in your ferret cage is hammocks and other hanging beds. So I am very excited to announce that for this video, I have my very first sponsor. Wow, didn't think we'd ever be here, folks. Someone actually cares enough about my content to sponsor me. Honestly, wouldn't do the same, but you know what? I'm not going to stop you. Today's sponsor is Sleepy Paws on Etsy. Sleepy Paws makes these absolutely adorable hammocks and beds for ferrets, rats, and other small animals that are gonna use these same sorts of style beds. They are super absolute, like honestly, so freaking cute. I like, I, ooh. they gave me this absolutely adorable space pattern. And also the inside is pink um, because they know pink is my favorite color. Um, uh, it is, I love pink so much. They're just so freaking cute. So I have two different types. I have um, this one here, which is like a multi-level hammock. So there's got like an inside spot and, and then they can go on the top. They also just sent me a regular plain flat hammock. They also sent me this really cute little ferret toy. I haven't given it to my ferrets yet because I wanted it to be in like pristine condition for when I show it to you guys. Honestly, quality of these bad boys, top notch. They are super sturdy. I feel so safe putting them in my ferret's cage. They're also 100% fleece, which is the safest material that you can give to your ferrets and small pets. So if you want to order anything off of Sleepy Paws, I will have a link down below. Lucky for you guys, you do get 10% off if you use the code FNF10. 10% off. 10%. So go check out Sleepy Paws on Etsy. Right now they only have um, they only have hammocks, but they will eventually be expanding to toys and harnesses and leashes, which I am extremely excited for because, ooh, Andromeda needs a new harness. She gonna look so cute. They also do custom orders. So if you want something very specific, just uh, go onto their Etsy, reach out to them, and they would be happy to make it for you. So please go check out Sleepy Paws on Etsy. Links down below. These are gonna look super cute in my cage. And the last thing that you're gonna wanna make sure that you're putting in your ferret cage, or I guess it's technically outside, anyway, whatever, is a cage cover. Cage covers are important to put on your cage, firstly, just because ferrets prefer to sleep in a dark, closed off space. And secondly, especially if you have a house that has a lot of artificial lighting, there have been studies done that link artificial lighting to the development of adrenal disease. So obviously the best thing to do there is then to make sure that your ferret is getting exposed to as little artificial lighting as possible, which means covering your ferret's cage. There are actual cage covers that you can buy out there. If you have a double critter or a double ferret nation cage, I know that Midwest sells a cage cover specifically for their cage but uh if you cheap like me and you don't you don't want to spend more money than you already been spending I just put a blanket over their cage and then I safety pin it um ain't nothing wrong with that 
it does what it does. So here is the finished product of what my beautiful cage looks like once I'm actually done uh, caring about it a little bit and putting some effort into it. Well, hopefully this video was a helpful to anyone out there who wants to put together a ferret cage, or maybe you just like watching these kind of videos. Nothing wrong with that. I like watching these kind of videos too. Please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, because by doing all those things, you become a citizen of the friendly neighborhood, which is where I live. Also, feel free to check out my socials. I will have them linked down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'll see you guys next video where I do something. I don't know what I'll do. I'll do something. Okay, goodbye. Oh, it's getting hot in here. I have to turn my air conditioner off when I film and it just, oh, I get spicy. I feel like I've got pit stains. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, oh uh, yes, my friend B just started a ferret channel. Um, it's really great. She is from Scotland. I love her accent. I like hearing her speak. It makes me, you know, just talk to me, you know? I don't care what it's about. Go subscribe to her channel down below. I'm getting heated, both because of the air conditioning not being on and uh, she a cutie, <laughs> for real though. Okay, <laughs> um, I need to end this video.